Happy holidays and welcome to one of the great rivalries in any sport. Louisville and Kentucky coming up here from Rupp Arena on CBS. Jim Nance along with Greg Anthony, Tracy Wolfson as the last two national champions are about to meet. This should be an interesting matchup in terms of styles. When you look at this Lobo team, the defending national champs bringing back their All-America and Russ Smith, they want to get out pressure and make this a fast game. If you're Kentucky, you want to control tempo, you want to play inside out, and you want to punish the smaller Lobo team. And the tip is controlled by Carly Stein of the Kentucky Wildcats who start for freshmen along with Paulie Stein who's a sophomore this being the youngest team in Division One basketball and off to a nine and three start almost got away from Andrew Harrison but able to retain it here on this first possession of the game going against 11 and one Louisville Harrison floating shot too strong and pulled down by Matthew and on that possession, really never allowed Randall to get a touch in an offensive position. Russ Smith, a little out of control, and it's taken away by Harrison, who puts up the shot. And again, just a little too strong. It stays at this end of the floor. And you're talking about Harrison a little bit. You see Russ Smith with the penetration. And the angle not created there by Jones, a poor decision by Smith, but you got to try to help your teammates out when they're under duress. By the way, Syracuse held on to win the game you were watching as we brought you the early action here at the start of this one, all the local markets. The rest of the nation will be joining us in just a moment as now Louisville with its second possession of this game. Here's Jones with a three, and he hits it. That's a big-time shot there. Dude. Think about it, Jim. You look at this local team. Two of the guys who were the most important players from the championship team on the roster don't even start with Hancock and also Bahana. Harrell with the steal and the layup. As the full-court pressure rattled the Wildcats, they had a hard time even inbounding it before. And it's going to be a foul against the Cardinals. And, and that's going to be a theme this entire game. Can you handle the quickness and the effectiveness of the pressure of Louisville for the, the, the battle of 40 minutes? That's going to be what's interesting for this young Kentucky team. They've really not faced a team as relentless with full court pressure as is Louisville. Foul against Blackshear. And here's Randall. They'll work the other side a little bit. As Aaron Har Harrison puts up the shot. Tip no good, and Blackshear has it. Over on a wing, Jones, and he's hit two threes already. And then that's an area of improvement for Russ Smith. You saw him leading transition there, getting the assist for the Cardinals. First eight points belongs to Louisville, and a foul call against the Cardinals. And it's a second foul on Wayne Blackshear. And that's a, a big call here. I'm, that's a tough way to pick up a foul there by Blackshear. But this game starting similarly to how the Michigan State game started for Kentucky. They did not get off to a very good start early in that game. Hancock, the most outstanding player of the Final Four last year, has come in for Blackshear, Luke Hancock been battling a nagging Achilles injury that has slowed him down. Kentucky's missed his first five from the field. Randall draws a third foul against the Louisville side. This one's on Mango Mathing. It'll put Randall on the line and he'll shoot a lot of free throws. Julius Randall, the freshman from Dallas, Texas. Averaging 18 points, 11 rebounds a game. Welcome to Rupp Arena as Kentucky, almost two and a half minutes into this game, still looking for a first point. Julius Randle 
will shoot a second free throw. Jim Nance, Greg Anthony, Tracy Wolfson. On the scene here in Lexington, Kentucky, a matchup of the last two national champions. 8-1 start here for Louisville. Chris Jones has hit a couple of threes, and the Cardinals forced one takeaway with full court pressure. Harrell with the ball here, got the steal on a basket. Here's Jones looking for his third three. And it's Randall pulling it away for the Wildcats. Feeding the corner, back to the wing, to Young. And that spins out. That's going to stay with Kentucky as Dominique Hawkins really fought for it for the Wildcats. Here's a look at who's on the floor right now as Louisville's Wayne Blackshear, a starter, has two fouls, so he went out. Hancock, the star of the Final Four last year, the MOP has come in for him. And meanwhile, one sub on the floor, and that is the aforementioned Hawkins for Kentucky. Here's Randall. <laughs> And Randall with the first basket for Kentucky. They have missed their first five from the field. Yeah, just not many power players. I don't want to call him a power forward, but he's a guy that plays with a tremendous amount of physicality, have the ability to beat you off the dribble 17 feet from the basket. Here's Hancock on the drive and a hand check call against Randall. And he can create so many problems for you because of this nifty ability to put it on the hardwood and get by the defender. And, and when you get those kind of blow-bys, Jim, it doesn't allow for the help defense to come over. And that's something he's been able to do with consistency all season long. Vantrese in the game for Louisville number 44. And Russ Smith has it swatted away by Pauley Stein, his 51st block already in this young season. And early on, even though Lobo made those two three-pointers, that's the game plan for Kentucky. That's what they want to take away is the ability to keep Smith and Jones out of penetration opportunities attacking their bigs. Poitras on the floor now for Kentucky as Randall puts it up off the glass and gets the soft touch. And now Kentucky with some pressure. Hancock breaks it. Smith takes it to the paint in his first two. Now that's going to be an adjustment that Calipari is going to have to make because if you extend your pressure, they have two point guards on the floor. And they put Russ Smith on the back end, which creates an attack opportunity in transition against the Cats. Look at Russ Smith with the steal behind the back and unable to convert. And then a foul call against Harold of Louisville. And there you're compounding the missed opportunity there by Russ Smith. It is such an intense rivalry, and I'm sure the intensity, you can even feel it at home. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Sonic, this is how you Sonic. And by Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And Louisville's off to a 10-5 lead. Let's get a little fast analysis from you, Greg Anthony, presented by AT&T. One of the keys, Jim, is going to be, if you're Louisville, your ability to keep the, the Wildcats out of the paint. That's been their strength all season long. They have an ability to attack the rim and get to the free throw line. That has to be contained for the Cardinals. And then if you're Kentucky, you have to handle the pressure. Louisville as good as anybody in the country at turning you over and creating scoring opportunities in the open floor. We've seen a little bit of that on display here early on. That's going to be that has to be held to a minimum if you're Kentucky. And there's Coach Patino coming back to Rupp Arena. Of course, won a national championship for the Kentucky Wildcats in 96, took them to the championship game in 97. With the unique angle of knowing this rivalry from both sides, yes. Coach Cal. Four and one in this uh, rivalry game is the Kentucky coach. Poitras underneath. 
But the worth is going to be important. He's a guy that's continuing to gain confidence. Really struggled last year trying to get into his own here for the Rockets. And he's called for the foul. Reaching in on Hancock. Poitras making that shot. He's the first Wildcat to score outside of Randall in the early action. And this was the call. And you can see, even though the fans don't like it, he comes across the body with that. And Hancock does a great job of selling that to the officials. Shane Bahannon is on the floor for Louisville. Number 21, of course, a starter on last year's national championship team. Here he is setting a screen for Rozier, who's just come in. He take the three now, and it's long. Poitras pulls it down. Andrew Harrison steps up, hits the jumper. And that's where he can be effective on the elbows, using his size in that high pick and roll. He's going to be able to get that all game long. And it's going to Kentucky. Early on, you can see here as he comes off this screen, and Ventries doesn't rotate up enough to take away that shot. But early on, Kentucky has done a great job with their half-court defense. They're really creating a lot of problems for the offense of Louisville. They're not getting much in terms of continuity, and the angles to attack off of penetration have not been there thus far. After missing their first six shots of the game, Kentucky's hit its last four. Dakari Johnson on the floor, too, as Harrison is fouled and the basket counts. It worked the first time. They come right back to it. That high screen in the pick and roll. He's able to get into traffic. And there you can see Lobo not together on that back line defensively. The help doesn't get there until it's too late. And Harrison using that size and that savviness around the rim to get the foul. Foul on Van Trees. Kentucky has its first lead. That completes the three-point play. And after being down 8-0, it's a 12-2 run, including the last seven now to the Wildcats. Kentucky's press, Jim, they utilize it to slow you down. Louisville uses it to speed you up, because if they can slow Louisville down and make them play more five on five, it's going to be really difficult for them in the half court to create offense. A second call now against Poitras. And Aaron Harrison will come in for Poitras. Here's Smith driving in, and it's blocked again, and up ahead to Aaron Harrison. And it's stripped away by Hancock, and off of him. But Quali Stein now with his second block at the other end. We talked about it here, just a great awareness, and something he does exceptionally well. His block shots, he's able to keep them in play, and that leads to a run-out opportunity for Kentucky, unable to convert, but they will maintain possession. Julius Randle back in as Cauley Stein goes out. And that's going to stay with Kentucky. Kentucky has tremendous size. Probably the biggest team in the country when you think about it. Their backcourt, both 6-6 in terms of the Harrison Twins, and that's the right call. I'll tell you what, though. Kentucky's struggling with their baseline out of bounds. And what did John Calipari talk about yesterday? They wanted to win the baseline out of bounds battle against Lobo, the pressure of Lobo creating problems early on. So they changed the call after first indicating it was going to stay with the Wildcats. Here's Smith who had 30 here two years ago in this building. Hancock in the paint feeds. Mathian converts. Set up by Hancock. That's a really important play, I think, for Hancock's confidence. Coming off the Achilles, he's not been the same player thus far this season. And Kentucky Saves it outside. Young wants it. Puts up the three and it's long. 
And off the hands of Dakari Johnson. And how about the contest there by Bahannon? And that's where being a young player, this is where you got to set him up with the pump fake because he's he's susceptible there, out of control. If he gives him the pump fake there, he can gather and get a better shot in rhythm. Bad decision there by the young man. Here's the freshman Rozier out of Shaker Heights, Ohio. And now Smith doubled up and has it taken away. On the floor and a tie-up that will stay at this end. Fantasy football fans keep the excitement going all postseason with playoff challenge. Now with even bigger cash prizes, see all the rules at cbsports.com slash challenge. Matthew, get it back outside to Jones. They've got Russ Smith on the bench. He's hit only one of his first five shots, had two of them blocked so far. And they don't beat the shot clock. And you can see, uh, in, impressed early on, I am, with Kentucky's half court defense. They have done a great job of corralling the penetration. Remember, this Louisville team, they don't really feature guys who have the ability to score consistently with their back to the basket. Everything they get is predicated off of penetration. Cardinals just totally unaware that time was running out on them as Young drives in and Mathing sends it out of bounds. 17 on the shot clock for Kentucky. Mathing is their version of Carly Stein, a young man with terrific shot blocking ability, still raw and developing, but they love his energy. Here's Randall, wants to challenge Mathing and does and scores. He is just a man with his ability. And, and, and what that does, the ability to take it off the dribble, it doesn't create double team opportunities for Lobo. If he's catching it in the post, they're going to double him and take the ball out of his hands. Hancock wide on the three. And Kentucky pushes it up the floor. Andrew Harrison lost it, dribbled right into Hancock. And now numbers for the Cardinals. Rozier fouled on the shot. Foul is called on James Young. And free throws coming up out of the break. How do the teams approach this game? How do they prepare for more on that? Let's go over to Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks, Jim. That's right. With this being a holiday week, both coaches prepared differently for this game. Rick Pitino kept his team in Florida after their FIU win. He had them practice there. He sent them home on Monday. And then he had them come back on Thursday. He said he wanted to get them away from the distraction surviving, surrounding this rivalry. John Calipari, he chose to let his players go home Saturday for the holidays. They did not come back till Christmas Day. Willie Pauley Stein calling it the worst scheduling ever. Slow start for the Cats, but they're right back in it, guys, up by two. Yeah, I kind of like the way Louisville yeah. preparing, you know. <laughs> A little trip to Sunny, South Florida. They won a game. Weather. Yeah, they had a game down there against Florida International. And then stayed for a few days. And Coach Patino's got one of his freshmen at the line right now, Terry Rozier. Kentucky leading it with Randall scoring half of Kentucky's points thus far. Rozier committed to Louisville out of Shaker Heights High School, but then went to Hargrave Military Academy prep school for a year. And he hits a couple to tie this game. I touched on this earlier, the pressure of Louisville. They want to speed up Kentucky. Get them maybe a little out of control where they can be more disruptive and maybe take away some of the touches that Randall gets. And three-point shot, no, for Aaron Harrison. Young puts it back up, no, and swept away by Bahannon. They come out of the timeout, by the way, with Smith still on the bench for Louisville. There's a, a bit of a love-hate relationship between Coach Patino and, and Russ Smith, and probably not happy with some of his decisions early on. But again, credit a lot of that to Kentucky's ability 
to contain him in the half court. Under 10 on the shot clock. Floating shot goes for Jones. And Jones has eight now for Louisville. Half their total. It's one of the few times, Jim, where we've seen Louisville with that kind of penetration in the half court. They are letting <laughs> the big men play on the interior. Very physical down low. That's young. That's Kentucky's first made three of the game. He is another good-looking freshman from Rochester Hills, Michigan. And when the game slows down like this, that's where Kentucky's size plays more of a factor. Not as quick as Louisville, but they do, because of the length, can make up for it when the game's in the half court. Bahannon just inside the arc. Off on the two. Second time now. Young is fouled in the act of three. Hancock got a piece of the hand. And this really created, because of Randall's ability to beat you off the dribble, Hancock had to commit to the help, unable to recover on the attempt at the triple. James Young to shoot three. Your favorite superstar performers honor Shirley McLean, Carlos Santana, Herbie Hancock. Martina Arroyo and Billy Joel. The Kennedy Center honors tomorrow after 60 minutes only CBS. One more for Young, who was first smitten by college basketball. Born in Flint, Michigan, so he loved that Michigan State team. He was just a young kid. And the team Cleves Bunch, the Flint Stones, and fell in love with college hoops. A lot of schools wanted him coming out of high school. Terrific talent with an ability also from a lateral quickness standpoint to defend on the perimeter. Hasn't been as good as Calipari would like, but really, I think, starting to figure it out. Russ Smith back on the floor. Mismatch here with Paulie Stein way outside on him. And it's Jones, and he fires another three, his third from outside in this game. Up ahead, Kentucky turns it over. And that's an example of playing just a little too fast. The faster the game, the smaller Kentucky becomes, which allows Louisville's quickness to have more of an impact. So you can see Cal's not happy with that. Again, you, you, you bail out Louisville when you try to play with the same pace they play with. Wants to drive and gets pinned underneath. Back outside, now to the corner, and Hancock's three rattles out. You saw Harrison at the other end with uh, like a triple jump. Yeah, that's a pretty good vertical there. Yeah. By the young man. And he, he's upset with the decision to throw that lead pass there. And a turnover here by Kentucky. Randall running the baseline. Remember, that was a, turn, a, a dead ball. Yeah, not, not able. Up, not coming off a make. Yeah, not able to run that baseline there. Possession over to Louisville. Hancock to inbound. Out to Van Treese. Now, and, and although Rusknip hasn't scored a lot, he's done a decent job with setting up his teammates here. Particularly that man right there. Jones again. He's got 13 right at his average per game this season. Last year's National Junior College Player of the Year. Top of the key and Young answers back. And how about the play there by Dakari Johnson though. The freshman with the poise. Solid post, you force help, and that creates that three-point opportunity for Young on the perimeter. Sometimes you just play decoy there, and that's what he does. He forces that double team, and it leaves Young open at the top of the key. The officials stopped play for a moment, and they took Young off the floor. He had blood on his leg. So that has to be addressed. He's taken out. 
Dominic Hawkins is on the floor here, guarding on Smith. He gets past him, feeds it to Hancock. Now steps back. That's a three. And again, just a little off. And a foul call against Harrell, his second. I didn't really see that one, especially after all the contact that we've seen allowed here early on. It's a little heated out here right now, and then you can see just not a lot there, but uh, it, it goes against the Cardinals there. And, and again, I, we haven't seen this type of maturity from Kentucky early on this season. This could be that game where it starts to really click for them. I know that's what John Calipari is hoping with this young group. Seven team fouls already called against Louisville which puts Kentucky in the one and one. This is a very experienced officiating crew by the way with Tony Green Mark Whitewood Doug Sermons all of whom officiated in last year's final four in Atlanta including Tony Green officiating in the championship game one on one Randall to get one more it just gave coach Cal a warning and a warning for Louisville they're going to have to try to keep Kentucky off the free throw line again anything that slows the game down is going to be an advantage for the Cats. Andrew Harrison tipped around Hawkins. Hawkins able to take that right between two Cardinals and draw another foul on Louisville. You see here just great effort by Hawkins there. He just brings great energy and, and talking with Calipari he said he's probably the only guy on our roster right now that really understands his role and embraces it when he's on the floor. He's got a one and one after Hancock is whistled for his second foul. Hawkins freshman from right here in the state of Kentucky Mr. Basketball last year. We're up just outside of Lexington, and we've got a lane violation. With Julius Randle just snuck in a little too soon for Kentucky. Hancock loads it up. Off on the three. Bahannon was on the line, going back to the Wildcats. They just can't seem to get Hancock going. And, and talking with Coach Patino, you see the effort here by Bahannon, but clearly steps on the line. But they, they haven't been able to get him going, in part because of the injuries. This is really like the start of this season. Remember, he didn't get the opportunity because of that Achilles to practice and work with the team over the summer or in preseason. And so he's just trying to round into shape, basketball shape from a rhythm standpoint. He's missed his first four shots, all of them from behind the line as Randall gets it down low. Smith, the fast hands in there. But Randall makes the move for two more. That's just, it's unguardable. You cannot allow him to operate one-on-one -on -one against the Cardinals' front line. He's just too good. And on the floor, trying to save it. They call a tie-up, and it's going to go to Kentucky. No, I think we have a foul. I think there's a foul call against Kentucky. One official had it a tie-up. The other steps in and says it's a foul on Andrew Harrison. Breaking the action. Kentucky on a seven point run. Jim Nance, Tracy Wolfson, and the old All America from UNLV, Greg Anthony. 
here at uh, Rupp Arena. What have you seen so far? Uh, early on, I, I think Kentucky slowed the game down, and they're starting to impose their will on the interior. It's not just the fact that Randall is scoring consistently, but they're dominating the backboard. They have more offensive rebounds, eight, than Louisville has rebounds total, seven here early on. Of course, we talked a lot about Julius Randall. As you see, he's hit all four shots he's taken from the field. And the rebounding edge early decisively in Kentucky's corner. Yeah, and, and Julius Randle, because of that ability to put it on the floor from the perimeter, it doesn't allow Lobo to set their defense and to double him. And you can see that they're a little bit confused by that. They're probably expecting more post stuff. He's shown the versatility in his game and why so many people think so highly of him as a basketball player. Jones, who's had the hot hand for Louisville in this first half. And, and Louisville, this is where you're seeing part of the issue for them. They don't have a post presence offensively. Hancock off the glass. And tapped around. Picked off the floor by Andrew Harrison. And you can see he's really struggling from a confidence standpoint. Very rarely are you going to see a shooter pass up an open look. But that's what happens when you don't have confidence in your ability. Driving in and tap back outside off the Harrison miss. It's Smith. Smith puts up the shot and he'll go to the line for a couple. Smith has had three big games here at Rupp Arena. The one in the matchup two years ago, and then they started their journey to the championship last year with their first two games right here on this floor. And Smith was brilliant then. And this is where he typically gets going in the open floor. And that missed shot by Harrison very much like a turnover because if you take bad shots against this Louisville team they're going to typically win the long ball battle and that's when they get out in the open floor foul call was on Hawkins his first Smith led Louisville with 21 last year in the matchup against the Wildcats a Louisville victory Got four today. Now Randall guarded by Hancock. And again, he hasn't missed. He just has a hunger to score the basketball. And again, just the, that quickness and that athleticism that combination is so difficult to deal with at that power forward position he's hit his first five shots here's Jones who's at five out of six for the Cardinals two-point shot is good again good as he did here early on and where would global be without him 15 points here in the first half. He has really been the only threat offensively they've had. Aaron Han Harrison shot is off, and Bahannon pushes it up ahead to Smith. He'll pull up, take the jumper. Now it's Randall driving past Hancock. And last touch by Louisville. And that's an example. These last two possessions, Kentucky, they don't get hurt, but you can see what I mean by when they try to play a little too fast. Randall fortunate here not to pick up the charge or the turnover, for that matter. And Kentucky will have an opportunity to operate in the half court. Andrew Harrison back on the floor for Hawkins. And Poitras will be returning after being called for two early fouls. And that's Rozier returning for the Cardinals as Jones will get a break. You got the two Harrison brothers, the twins, by way of Richmond, Texas. Andrew, number five, handling it here. His brother Aaron, both starters, both decorated prep players. What have been the impressions you've seen you've made with them so far? Well, I think early on they, they both struggled with the speed of the, the college game and you know in high school they're both so accustomed to being bigger bigger and able to use their bodies to get where they want 
And that's an example of it right there. Haven't been able to do it as much in college yet, but they're doing it today. That's Young with the putback by Lanzo. Timeout Louisville. And we talk so much about the pressure of Louisville. It's been about the pressure of Kentucky in terms of dominating on the interior. Randall putting on the show for the Cats. And there is Julius Randall, who is six for six from the field. Going to take a little break here. Coming out of Prestonwood Christian High School in the Dallas area. Where he averaged last year 32 points and 22 rebounds a game. One of the top recruits in the country, and you're seeing why. A 13 to 4 stretch for Kentucky to go up seven here with four and a half to go. First half. Smith with the three. Young now driving and off the mark. Long rebound tapped out to Bohannon. And he stepped out of bounds. And, and you can just see how the size of Kentucky is creating problems, not just in terms of their ability or inability to make shots, Louisville, but even when they get rebounds, they're swarmed. They're made to feel uncomfortable out on the floor. They look more like the younger team today here against Kentucky. Matthewing, the starter, is back in for Van Trees. It's Young again. And that's Corey Stein with the putback. His first two points of the game. And Lobo went to the zone there because Randall's not in the game. And for a team that was already struggling to rebound, even more difficult to control your defensive backboard when you're in a zone. Bahannon. Almost lost it. Helter Skelter stretch here for Louisville. And Smith will quiet things for a moment. And that's a huge basket for the entire Louisville team. And I say that because he's their best player. And if he's struggling, it takes a little bit of confidence away from everybody else. Oh, there's a big time block and a save by Mathing. Rozier pushes it up the floor. Smith is hitting now two out of eight from the field. Feeds Rozier with the three, and he pops it. And there you go again. That's where they're going to be at their best, and that's a good timeout by Calipari. Starting to feel too good are the Cats and playing too fast. That's going to be the advantage for Louisville here. Beautiful contest by the big fella. Cards hanging tough. Five quick points by the Cardinals. Draws the timeout by Kentucky. But other than Chris Jones, and a three just hit a moment ago by Rozier, the Cardinals have struggled yeah, on the floor. I, I, they have, Jim, and I think some of it has to do with obviously Hancock's lack of confidence, but also that size. It makes you uncomfortable on the floor. You don't have the same amount of space and rhythm with which to operate especially as the game slows down. We have to see the adjustment that the Cardinals make as this game progresses. Young and Randall making a little two-man game. Now the three, and that's his first miss. Took it outside and off the back of the rim with the three. Young. And a foul on Bahannon. And again, the second shots. Very similar to what we saw from Louisville earlier this season against North Carolina. The size creates a lot of problems and also more opportunities for Kentucky. Playing with a lot of confidence here in the first half. Back at Rupp Arena in Lexington. And coming up, AT&T at the half. Doug Gottlieb and Seth Davis will get you caught up with what's going on in college basketball today, including that big top ten matchup game that was part one of our doubleheader. 
Syracuse over Villanova. The recap coming up on AT&T at the half. Well, Kentucky has had some second chance opportunities. Randall here, Paul Stein scored off a beautiful follow up. And the thing about this game so far, you know, Rick Pitino's talked earlier this season about them not being as good defensively as they were a year ago. And you're starting to see that. You saw it in the Carolina game. You're seeing it here. Defense, the last line of it is your ability to control the defensive backboard. 11-0, 12-0 on second chance points now here in this first half. And really, that's been the difference in the game. It's Jones. Got Kwame Stein out there on him. And Smith, beautiful shot. Up ahead, Young, given the chance. Tapped outside to Hancock. Had a three on two if they want it. Jones, three-pointer. A rare miss for him. And a foul call on Bahannon. It's not often that Shane Bahannon's been in games where there have been guys who are equally as physical. Then you factor in the size advantage that Kentucky has. It's been a challenge for the young man. He's going to have to make the adjustments as this game progresses. Second on Bahannon, double bonus now, rest of the half. Two for Young. Thursday on CBS, Sherlock's greatest rival returns in the first new elementary of the year. Discover the hit drama Thursday at 10, 9 central on America's number one network, only CBS. And Young gets the second one to go. And Coach Cow will bring in Dominique Hawkins for Young. This Kentucky team during the break, Tracy talked about the different philosophies, but between the semesters and during the holiday break, they go into, they retreat into what they call Camp Cow. <laughs> they could practice two times a day, you know, you never know for sure exactly what they're going to do, when they're going to do it. And he's back to boot camp. Yeah, and he didn't know how his guys would respond. He talked about it. Some of his prior young teams, they all had a chip that they played with. He said, this group really hasn't displayed that thus far. And I tell you what, though, they've shown a bit of a chip here in this first half. I love how they've competed against the Cardinals. That's the first foul on Aaron Harrison. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one for Hancock. Yeah, that was the big theme when we talked at their practice yesterday for Coach Calipari about the different classes that came in. Oh, and Hancock even fails to hit the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. The different, if you will, ways that mentally these teams approached a season. And this team, he says, just not quite there with that same chip. And, and to be expected, he also said, listen, this team's, even though he's always had young teams, this team's even younger. So the, the leadership hasn't been established yet. The identity of how they're going to play hasn't been established yet either. Here's Randall. So <laughs> tough to stop. Randall now has 16. At the other end, quickly. And Hancock scores. And that's a big basket for Hancock. And, you know, when you look at Louisville, they're struggling. One, they don't have an interior presence, so the way they create space in the half court is with the threat of the three-pointer. There you see the battle down below, and Randall drawing the foul. It's just He is just a load, and he works so hard. And, and again, this area here is where it, that's just unguardable because he's not in a position where you have a set defense that can supply the help. You have to be able to guard one-on-one -on -one and just not many bigs with the lateral quickness to contain this young man. Two for Randall coming off the foul by a Corey Agal. We're seeing his first action, a freshman from Louisville charged with the foul. Randall, who had 29 points, 10 rebounds in Kentucky's last game, that was against Belmont, is now up to 17 in this one. And, and as well as Kentucky has played, if you're Louisville, you, you can't be too discouraged. A seven-point game where you don't feel like you've been able to really implement your game plan. Oh, oh Smith! Oh, my goodness! With even Randall in the area, throws it down. 
And another foul at the other end and more free throws. Will Russ Smith make it a little statement? Well, they don't have an interior presence at the post, but they do in terms of their ability to penetrate and get to the rim. That'll send a bit of a message to Kentucky. Good. I think Randall's got to be saying, I didn't know he could do that. And you know what? That That's the kind of play. We talk about momentum swings, and fortunately for Kentucky, we were able, able to dispel some of it by getting back to the free throw line, but they're not able to convert. But those plays can give a team confidence, momentum, as you get ready to go into the half. Oh, and they miss both, and now Louisville can take the last shot. Smith throwing that down has hit his last three from the field after a slow one for seven. Five seconds to go. Here's Jones. Jones wants to three, wanted the foul, no call, and we reach halftime. Jones making an appeal, but no whistle. First eight points of the game went to the Cardinals. Then Kentucky really dictated most of that, that half. Late flurry by the Cardinals. It's a five-point game. Let's go to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks a lot, Coach. A strong first half. How do you like the intensity your team came out with today? We're doing fine. I mean, we're learning to become a team. That's what this is all about. This is a tech, tough challenge for us. The game is really physical. On drives, there's a lot of bumps. We got to learn to play through those. Whether you're head and shoulders by or not, just play and be strong. We've had some blocks and some misses because of that. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Thanks. Jim. That's the end of the first half here in Lexington with the score Kentucky 41 and Louisville 36. We'll send you to Doug Gottlieb in New York with AT&T at the half after these messages on CBS. Doug Gottlieb in New York coming up on AT&T at the half. Seth Davis joins me with scores, highlights, and recap of Syracuse's win over Villanova after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. AT&T, rethink possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome to AT&T at the half. I'm Doug Gottlieb with the score in Lexington. The Wildcats leading the Cardinals 41-36 in the matchup of our last two national champions, joined, as always, by Seth Davis. Seth, Mike Tyson famously said, everyone has a plan to get punched in the mouth. Louisville actually punched Kentucky in the mouth, got an eight-point lead, first two minutes and change to go, but then foul trouble really caused their defensive rotations to change. That seemed to fire up Kentucky. Well, when I talked to Rick Pitino this morning, his number one concern was his big guys getting into foul trouble. That's exactly what happened. Why? Because Julius Randle, this is a man's game. The man-child dominated the first half. Call him Julius Mandel, Doug, with that dunk. 17 points, three rebounds in the first half. Montrez Harrell has two fouls. Shane Bahannon has two fouls. Wayne Blackshear has two fouls. So now it's the second line guys having to defend uh, Julius Randle in the first half. That's why he was able to dominate, similar to what he was able to do against Michigan State. Yep. The second half for Kentucky, Doug, is all about poise. It's not X's and O's and strategy. If they can keep their poise, they will win this game. It's funny you point out the poise because I didn't think Louisville showed great poise. Like one time they triple teamed to Kari Johnson in the post. Kari Johnson can't score in the post. And then here you have a perimeter ball screen in which you're trying to ice him or funnel him down to the baseline. This is Andrew Harrison. And instead, Steven Van Treese gets caught in a bad spot. That's not his fault. That's actually Terry Rozier's fault. I, I thought Louisville mentally, mentally checked out of some defensive possessions. And then Luke Hancock comes in. He's the hero of the Final Four. And he doesn't hit any shots. And when you're filling in for Wayne Braxier, who's in foul trouble, you have to make those open looks to open up Kentucky's defense. The best 20 minutes of defense that Kentucky has played all season long. If this is going to be their identity moving forward, they are a Final Four caliber. All right, let's get to the scoreboard, starting with the game played earlier here on CBS. Villanova taking on Syracuse, and early on, you can just clip and save the first five or eight minutes for Nova. That'd be great. Stop the game there. Stop the game there. Do they five have to play threes, all 40? Five threes in the first eight minutes of the game. But that's when Syracuse got out in transition. Three straight turnovers kind of triggered their offense. Well, you know, Villanova's not a very good three-point shooting team. I think it was part of Syracuse's game plan to give them that shot. But my goodness, did Syracuse go on a spur. 20 to nothing after trailing by 18 points early on. Tyler Ennis and Trevor Cooney were magnificent. 41 points between them, 14 for 17 from the foul line. And Syracuse to go on to a dominating second half win. When you give them a 15-point lead, 
that's a long way to come back from. So I'm proud of the way we really hung in there and came back. It would have been easier to say this is a tough day. Congratulations. Enjoy the win. Thanks, Bill. 29 for 35 from the free throw line also will win you a lot of games. Syracuse looking like they're in prime position to make another run towards the Final Four. No I decade agree. wait for the Orange. Let's head to Scotty as the Badgers under Bo Ryan, 107 at home against non-conference foes, and it helps when you have Sam Decker. They're tough to beat in the Cole Center. Sam Decker, 14.6 rebounds uh, on the game today. Remember now, once they get into Big Ten play, Wisconsin plays Ohio State once and Michigan State just once. Both of those games will be in the Cole Center, so they could ride this out for a while. Literally, the Big Ten championship goes through the Cole Center, which which undefeated team is the worst, least worthy of where they're ranked? Well, let's just say that nobody is going to go undefeated the rest of the season. People talk about Wichita State maybe being able to do it. The Missouri Valley Conference has the best home base fans in all of college basketball. I look for Arizona, by the way, have a big challenge coming up at UCLA. UCLA has not played well, but they're going to get the number one team in the country in Pauley Pavilion. The Cats better be ready. And that's a big rivalry out on the West Coast. And of course, UCLA zones and Arizona struggles to shoot. Join us next Saturday. It's an NCAA basketball doubleheader right here on CBS as number five Michigan State clashes in the Big Ten with Indiana, who won the league. Cut down the nets even though they lost the game. Anyway, followed by an ACC matchup. That's right, ACC between number nine Duke and Notre Dame in the ACC. Thanks for watching AT&T at the half. I'll be back with you in just one moment. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. AT&T, rethink possible. Doug Gottlieb with a reminder to tune in tomorrow for an NFL on CBS doubleheader. Among early games, Baltimore and Miami are both playing for one spot in the playoffs. Later, the Broncos look to lock up home field advantage. And Dan Marino sits down with Peyton Manning to talk about his record-breaking season and what keeps him motivated. Yeah, I think one of the most enjoyable parts of playing quarterback for me is when you work with a, with a new guy to get on the same page. Yeah, I was just going to ask you that. How, how fun was it to take this personnel and kind of build the offense you know, it, around them? It, it's really what keeps... Keep, keeps you feeling young and, and keeps, you, keeps you stimulated. You'll see the full interview tomorrow at noon Eastern on the NFL Today. Join us on Tuesday, New Year's Eve at 2 p.m. Eastern for the 80th edition of the Hyundai Sun Bowl featuring Virginia Tech taking on number 17, UCLA. The second half of Louisville, Kentucky is coming up right after this. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Reese's, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. Exxon Mobil. And by AT&T, Rethink Possible. Back here in Lexington with a five-point Kentucky League. Jim Nance, Greg Anthony, along with Tracy Wolfson. Big edge rebounding wise for Kentucky and second chance points in that first half. And I think a lot of it's predicated on the style and the tempo of the game. Kentucky's been able to control that. Having said that though, that last three minute stretch was really big for Louisville. I think they started to figure out a little bit of how to attack in the half court. Louisville hit five of its last seven shots from the field in the first half. There you see offensive rebounds 11 to 2 and second chance points 12 zip in Kentucky's favor. Those stats presented by Coke Zero. It'll be Kentucky inbounding to start the second half. Again, Kentucky at 9 and 3 on the year. Losses to Michigan State, Baylor, and North Carolina. Louisville 11 to 1. It's lost to North Carolina. So the Tar Heels. Beating both of these teams. But as you said very early on, each team, as Harrison, Aaron Harrison hits a, a jump shot, looking for quality wins. Really a statement for both teams. And again, a, a lot been made of these two teams about how good they are, but thus far early on, neither has been able to show that in terms of their play. And how about that play there by Russ Smith? Wow, high off the glass and a foul call on Harrison. Let's go over to Tracy. Well, guys, I spoke with Rick Pitino coming out of the locker room, and he said his biggest frustration was that they were manhandled on the glass, and he seemed extremely frustrated with some calls by the officials. As for Julius Randle and his 17 points, he said they need to trap him more, and they will here in the second half. 
All right, Tracy, that's a three-point play by Russ Smith. He now has made his last four shots from the field. And here's Randall, who led Kentucky with 17 in that first half. Skip pass to Young, and he's short on the three. Harrell with a quiet first half. Early foul trouble. Sets up Smith, and the three is off the mark. Followed up. Matthian with their first second chance points of the game. I tell you what, that's a big timeout by John Calipari. The intensity level has completely dropped for Kentucky. You can see the sense of urgency from the Cardinals as they start to get back in the game. You're looking at Kevin Ware, who will ever forget how his team last year rallied around him during the NCAA tournament run. For the latest on what's going on with Kevin, let's bring uh, Tracy back in. Well, you can't help but think about what took place nine months ago, what we witnessed from that horrific leg injury, the scene, the reactions from his team, his, his coach, the fans, the nation, how everyone just surrounded him. And now 220 days later, he takes the court for the cards. He has played in eight games this season. He is not out today because of soreness in that leg after getting kicked there last week but he told me overall he's about 90 percent still playing catch up after missing most of the summer but he is truly blessed to be back guys Kevin Ware who now has missed two straight games and they hope to have him back as this season starts heading on a track to Dallas the site of this year's final four this Louisville team with many parts back from last year, but still trying to find uh, the cohesion that they had last year with Peyton Siva directing things. And of course, they also lost uh, Gorgie Jang in the in the middle. But the parts are there for Louisville. And, and in a lot of ways, they've also lost Hancock and Bahannon because of injury and the suspension here at the first third of the season with those guys not being the factors they were a year ago. Tapped around. And it's a call against Louisville. It's Russ Smith's second. You know, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I said this about Louisville last year. They, they were the best team in the country at playing well when they didn't play well, meaning that they don't get caught up in the score. They don't lower their heads or feel sorry for themselves. They compete for 40 minutes. And that's what John Calipari tried to remind his team during that timeout. A little bit of complacency set in to start this second half. And I think it's given Louisville some confidence. It's Randall. Got hands all around him. Back outside. Andrew Harrison has it deflected and saved by Hancock. Snaps it ahead. Russ Smith coming in and ties the game. <laughs> oh, oh. And, and you can see how much better defensively Louisville has been in the containment of Randall's penetration. That was a perfect example on that possession. Great kick ahead there by Hancock. And then now you see me, now you don't. Russ Smith with the finish. The last seven points to the Cardinals, who really most of this game has felt like to me, Greg, they haven't played their best, but here they are already pulling even with Kentucky. Well, I, I think they had to make the adjustment, and that happens. They have never seen a team with this much size and athleticism, nor had they ever been in an environment this hostile. And so now they're starting to get a little bit more familiarity. They're more comfortable with how the game's being played, and Kentucky not nearly as intense as they were in the first half. Second chance coming up. And Harrison had two looks at it. Smith driving in past Young. And that is going to be taken away. Basket interference. It might have gone anyway. Yeah, that's a great point. It might have gone. But the other thing we're seeing now, Lobo a little bit better on the defensive backboard, which allows Russ Smith to get out in the open floor. And I think you're right. This had a very good chance of going in. It was Harold who tried to follow it up, but the ball was still right above the cylinder. Jones is whistled for his first. But if you're, I was going to say, Jim, if you're Rick Pitino, you don't mind the aggressive mistake there by Harold. At least the energy is there, not on display for the most part in that first half. Here 
It was Louisville's chance to take its first lead since the early minutes. On a wing, Hawkins back outside. Aaron Harrison on the baseline, and that's off Harold. And you can see again the decision making not there early on in this half, but it has been for Russ Smith. First 17 minutes, he was one of seven from the field. The last three was three of three and got into a rhythm, and he's carried that over here into the second half. And when he plays well, it gives this entire Cardinals team a lot of confidence. Tapped out by the Cardinals that last basket when he went to the other side and knew that the shot blocker was waiting for him, Paulie Stein. Great piece of work. He's got five of their seven in this half. Randall's not in the game right now, so if you're Kentucky, where are you going to go for your offense? Four on the shot clock, and the three is long. Blocked away by... Montrez Harrell, and again Louisville looking for the lead back. It's Hancock with the three. Just not able to hit it today, and Smith flies into the bench. Takes a couple of chairs down, but he's fine. And, and even though those that shot didn't fall, that's the style of play that Louisville wants. They want this game to be played in the open floor where it minimizes the size advantage of Kentucky. your point guard too, to, to really take control and make sure you get quality possessions each time down if you're Kentucky. A real point of emphasis for the Wildcats is development at the point as this season marches on. And it's been a challenge for him early on for Harrison, but the talent's there. It's just the feel and understanding at this level. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for younger players to, to hit that comfort zone. Foul calls on Jones, his second. It'll put Andrew Harrison at the line for a couple. And coming back in is Wayne Blackshear for the Cardinals. He got taken out of this game early because of Two quick fouls. And that's a great point. And he's, again, someone offensively who they tend to look for for opportunity. We're hearing now that Randall has left the bench area, and he is uh, suffering some cramps. And we'll get an update on that from Tracy in a moment here. The basket counts by Smith. And the foul call is on Hawkins. And Kentucky completely breaks down. The one guy that you have to be concerned with offensively in the half court, Russ Smith, no awareness on the weak side, no rotation to cut off that penetration. And Smith makes a pay. Russ Smith now to give Louisville the lead. See how much Kentucky misses Randall on the floor. It's not just his ability to score it, it's his presence. It creates space for other guys to get opportunities. When he's not out there, it becomes a tremendous challenge for them to get good looks. Well, they have Poitras and Cauley Stein down low as Young feeds it to Poitras. Great assist by the freshman. And great execution as well by Kentucky. Jones splits. Sets it to the corner, and that's way short. Picked up off the floor by Hawkins. Good decision by Kentucky. Nothing there. Let's let's make Louisville defend in the half court and try to punish them on the interior. Tapped out by Harrell with 15 on the shot clock. Got a break in the action. Young 
setting up his teammate Poitras to get consecutively back. Let's take a look at the AT&T fast analysis. Well, it's going to be about points in the paint if you're Louisville, and there's three ways to get it, penetration, post, or the pass. Here, take a look at this recognition by Young. All the weak side help is there. This penetration is going to allow for that lob at the rim because there's nobody on the strong side to come over. Good understanding, and if you're John Calipari, you love seeing your guys play for one another. That's been an issue for him here early on. Anytime you have that much height, an expectation with young talent. They're oftentimes trying to prove themselves a good example of playing for one another on that possession. So Randall fighting cramps is back on the floor now. Rozier too strong. All Louisville underneath. And they'll say that was an act of shooting. Hawkins third. And another turnover on an out-of-bounds play created by Lobo. And then the lack of effort to get back from Kentucky. You have got to sprint back knowing Lobo is looking to score at every opportunity in the open floor. Smith will get another as Hawkins goes out. And Aaron Harrison returns. Fourteen points for Smith in the last nine minutes of action going back to the first half. Shot. Oh, wow. Looked like he lost control of it. But Aaron Harrison high off the glass with the left hand. Fortunate there. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I, I thought he got a little lucky with that one, but young man is very skilled and crafty with his ability to finish in traffic. Here's Smith. Over Carly Stein and off on the three. It's young taking it away for Kentucky. Now Randall wants it. Kicks it back out. And Randall's still hurt. Yeah, and he's in fact he wants out. Now that time it looked like he might have bumped knees on the penetration on the baseline. Poitras will come in for Randall. Yeah, that, I think it happened on the drive prior to that earlier in that possession. 10 on the shot clock and a foul against Rozier of the Cardinals. His first. Yeah, you see here on this drive right there, those knees bump right there. And I, I thought that's where the issue occurred for Randall. Andrew Harrison. Jumper, yes. And I think that's his shot right there. Great understanding with his size off of that elbow pick and roll. He can get that shot off anytime he wants. So after Louisville pulls even a couple of times, there's a turnover. The last five points to the Kentucky Wildcats. The right idea by Russ Smith, but the wrong angle. For that pass. That's one where you got to just put up towards the rim and allow Harold to go get it. Really asking a lot for a guy running full speed to throw it behind him and to catch that. Again, you can see here if he's just a little more patient and puts that up at the rim, I think they got an easy opportunity for a layup. Smith to the bench, Chris Jones back in, and Van Treese also on the floor for Coach Patino for Matheen.
Thomas Stein. Back outside. And it's Aaron Harrison. Line drive shot off the front of the rim. And Louisville's done a much better job on the defensive backboard here in the second half, which has gotten them opportunities earlier in the shot clock before Kentucky can get their defense set. And that's going to be a palming call and another turnover. And that's, I thought, a good call, especially right in front of the official on this play here. I'll tell you what, I take that back. I didn't look like he had his hand underneath. But that is a tough angle for the official oftentimes to see. Two straight turnovers committed by the Cardinals. And Randall's coming back into the game on the next whistle. And that's going to be a call against Blackshear. You can't do that this year. That's a great point, Jim. That point of emphasis, they're not going to allow you to put your hands on the ball handler. You've got to move your feet. You see right there, he reaches out to impede progress. That's the correct call. And that's a breakdown by Blackshear because Young's a lefty. So in that situation, that's the one thing you want to take away. You want to make him use that screen, which is where his help was. So Blackshear goes out with three fouls from the corner. Long and the rebound to Rozier. Takes off with it. Lost control. Somehow got it back. Hancock hasn't hit one yet. Now he does with the three. And, and look at the advantage of controlling the defensive backboard. That possession created cross matches for, for Louisville, and then they were able to take advantage and get Hancock in rhythm with the three. And notice the difference on his three-point where he pump fake. We were talking about Young earlier. That created the rhythm for him to knock down that triple. Thomas Stein now with five on the shot clock. In traffic, it's lost. It's Jones taking off. Harrison defending, and the shot goes plus one. And how about the strength of Chris Jones right there? And the great presence. They're doing a great job of creating tempo with their defense, getting in the open floor, and finishing at the rim. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. The Mercedes-Benz Winter Event. Hurry in. Exceptional offers in soon. And by the Quicksilver Car from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. Welcome back to Lexington, all tied here at 51. In April, Louisville won their third national title, and the year before, it was Kentucky taking their eighth national championship, and both teams took away a piece of center court. The Wildcats have their locker room floor, the center court logo from New Orleans. Louisville has their piece of the floor hanging at the Yum Center. Both schools, thanks to Northwestern Mutual, have auctioned off pieces of their Final Four floor with the proceeds going to a local children's hospital in an effort to raise money for pediatric cancer. Guys, these two rivals coming together for an important cause. Yeah, thank you, Trace. It's amazing to see the last two champions on the floor like we have here today, a rivalry that started 100 years ago in 1913. Of course, they went dark for 62 years. They didn't play. They, Folks thought it was just too intense until they came back in 83, and that gives Louisville the lead for the first time since 21-19. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We, we aired the Men of March features that we put together earlier in the season. I had an opportunity to spend the day with both Coach Patino and Coach Calipari. And, you know, it, it's impressive to see how they go about their business with their program, and hopefully our fans got an opportunity to see, get some great insight during those shows. Foul call on Rozier. You know, what's interesting in this second half is that the adjustments by Louisville defensively, obviously Randall not being the factor he was in the first half, but they've done it by containing penetration 
which allows them to keep bodies on bodies and then controlling that defensive backboard that's gotten them out in transition. That's Takari Johnson missing with the hook. But Kentucky gets a new 35. Andrew Harrison for two more. And that's a big possession, and just as we talked about, Lobo doing a better job on that defensive glass. Offensive rebound there creates that second chance opportunity. He's got 13, and Young's going to be called for this one. Thursday on CBS, bang in the new year with TV's number one comedy, The Big Bang Theory's first new episode of the year, Thursday at 8. 7 Central, only CBS. Two fouls on Young. As Hancock. Off the back of the rim. Kentucky by one at the midway point of the second half. Young on the baseline, jumper. And underneath is Jones. Coming out with it. How about the rebound by Chris Jones? He moved Dakari out of the way there to get that defensive rebound. Put back, too strong by Bahannon. And Poitras clears for Kentucky. On the drive, it's going to be a charge call. Good job of moving his feet. Hancock sliding over. And he establishes the position before Harrison leaves his feet, which is another point of emphasis by the officials this season. Andrew Harrison sits down with three fouls. Jones. And he is called for carrying it. That's the second call in the last couple of minutes for palming the basketball against Louisville. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to see that one again. I didn't think, again, that he turned it over. Yeah, actually, I take that back. That time, that's a very good call by the official. I didn't think the last one was. gone to the zone because they know that this Kentucky group has a tough time of getting the ball in the paint. Back outside, picked up by Russ Smith. Smith takes it to the paint, draws the foul. And that's a smart play. Literally just threw his body into Hawkins there to initiate contact to get to the free throw. This guy is so good in the open floor because in part he's so savvy. He really understands body control and where he is out on the floor. Smith with two coming at the line. He's hit four out of six so far. Tuesday, January 7th, a new action drama, Intelligence. Premiering January 7th after NCIS, only CBS. Smith during the tournament games, NCAA tournament games last March, at 25 and 27 here at Rupp, plus the 30 he had the year before against Kentucky. He's had uh, some big explosions here. Well, a little bit more like Russ Arena. Russ the Arena, there the you last go. three times oh, he's been here. Harrison blocked. Mathing, put back and in by Young. And they're going to need Bahannon because when they go for the contest on the block, you're going to have to be solid with your block out on the weak side. Here's Bahannon, puts up the short jumper. And too strong, and it's Young at both ends getting rebounds. He's been active more than just scoring today, which is gonna be needed for this Kentucky team. But really, this is one of those games where you're starting to see what John Calipari talked about all year. They're showing a bit more of their identity in terms of how they're gonna have to play to win games. Young has 14 points, 8 rebounds. 10 seconds on the shot clock. And 
Andrew Harrison. Spin move and one. <laughs> Under control is the freshman. Beautiful spin, the strength to control with the finish. Kentucky by four. A big move by Andrew Harrison, plus a free throw coming up. Foul call against Chris Jones, but just after Louisville took the lead at 52-51, they've gone almost three and a half minutes without a basket from the field. Yeah, the young cats have responded from a defensive standpoint of really trying to keep Russ Smith under control, which is always a difficult challenge, but really been impressed with the ebb and flow of, of this game. Smith with 19. Jones 18 for Louisville. The rest of the team has 16. Randall again is not in here. Tracy, what's the update on Randall? Well, guys, he is back in the locker room, really struggling with those cramps. Remember, they haven't played a game since Saturday. They took three days off from practice for the Christmas break. Could be that Randall is feeling the effects of that layoff, guys. Of course, he's seen very limited action as Randall in this half has not scored in the second half after a monster 17-point performance in the first half. And listen, you'd absolutely rather have him in the game, but it also creates opportunities for other guys to step up if you're Kentucky. Poitras kind of tried to kick that outside, but there was no teammate in the area and goes out of bounds back to Louisville. Cardinals have their starting five on the floor as Carly Stein takes it away. Young over to Harrison for two more. And just like that, Kentucky suddenly is back in front by seven. And how about the defense by Carly Stein, the seven-footer, moving his feet on that pick and roll, not allowing Russ Smith to split. Creates that opportunity to get out and transition. Look at him, quick hands, great awareness by Young. Good vision for the layup. Coming out of a Louisville timeout, a nine to one run here by Kentucky. All without Randall, which is, again, even more important. And a lot of times you're looking for your young team to grow up, and the best way to do it is when you're facing some adversity, your biggest rival, without your best player, no better time. Hancock on the drive. Gives it up to Harrell, back outside to Smith. Smith kicks it outside, Hancock three, yes! That's a big basket. The crowd wanted to travel on Russ Smith. Instead, they get the triple from Hancock. With six and a half to go. Kentucky led by five at the intermission. It's now four. Louisville at one point took the lead in this half. Before Kentucky went on that run. Now it's Young with a three. And how good has he been? Really on both ends. Although he hasn't shot it great, he hasn't allowed the lack of makes to affect his overall game. He's been solid defensively. He's rebounding. And he's competed on both ends. No whistle, as Smith put it up wildly, and then Harrison tried to save it, put it right back to Louisville. Long rebound is finally taken by Aaron Harrison. And it's Young, whipping it over to the far side. Poitras. game reminiscent of the Carolina game for Louisville just really unable to compete consistently in the paint they've had stretches but the effort here by Kentucky and Poitras in particular back 
Happy New Year from the Late Show. Monday, Dave's got Billy Crystal and the talks Julie Chin. And later in the week, Tom Hanks. Followed by Craig Ferguson, only CBS. You know, Jim, I, I mentioned that Carolina game because that's really the, the, the one real game for Louisville that they played one of the better teams in the country. And this is a similar take on the game. Jones and Smith took 42 of the 67 shots in that game. Their bigs were not nearly as effective. And we're seeing a similar scenario play out in this one where offensively it's just been Jones and Smith. No one else has stepped up to give them any support. Well, here comes Smith with a three, and it rattles out. Long rebound, Kentucky. Young up ahead. Harrison got alone, and he converts. And then how about Young there? Terrific rebound, but then the presence to see Harrison streaking out for the layup. A 15-4 run now by the Wildcats. Timeout Louisville. Young got it ahead. And Aaron Harrison found himself free for the basket. You know, the Harrison twins in the first half combined for seven points. In the second half, they've combined for 17 points. And a lot of it has to do with the improvement of their decision making. They didn't settle. They didn't take the shots that Louisville wanted them to. They took the shots that they were comfortable making. And also, again, the decision making by both. Gozier unable to get hold of it. And it's gotten very sloppy the last few minutes for Louisville. And you were talking about how they're not getting anything from their bigs. You don't expect a lot point production wise from Mathing, but you take the Hannon, and you take Harrell and Blackshear, they average about 30 points a game. Combined today, two points. And, and that's really been the issue when they've stepped up in competition, the Carolina game, and then also today, it puts a lot of pressure on Smith and Jones to carry them offensively without getting much support. And that's going to be Blackshear, number four. Just not really poor angle on the close out there and then just not able to move his feet well enough to take away the baseline. And, there, and also not understanding where his help was going to come from. Van Trees on the baseline to cut off that drive. That's the ninth team foul against the Cardinals. So it'll be a one and one here and then double bonus the rest of the way. And it spins out. And a foul call against Kentucky. That's one of the little things when you look at Kentucky. They have struggled today as well as all season at the free throw line. They get there with a great degree of frequency, but only 13 of 22 here today. So Poitras, number three, Harold will get his turn at a one and one. The 10 point margin right now is the largest lead of the game. And Harrell, who not only, of course, was part of that national championship team, he won a gold medal during the summer playing in the FIBA under-19 World Championship Games, playing for the U.S. in the competition over in the Czech Republic. Big-time year for him, 2013. He's got two. And they're going to need a big stretch from him right now in terms of his activity to get back in it. Tim Henderson on the floor for the first time for Louisville. Of course, the sharpshooter who gave them big production in the Wichita State win national semifinals when they had a rally from 12 down in the second half against the Shockers, and he had a couple of threes and a 42-second span. Here he is defending on Harrison. And Aaron ha Harrison gets the soft roll. And that's where the size made a difference able to just create enough of an angle to get that up over the rim he's got 10 points all this half all of them Blackshear scoops it up no go 
And another foul on Kentucky. Only one basket from the floor in the last seven and a half minutes by Louisville. And Aaron Harrison says, hey, put a package on me, CBS. Jim Nance with Greg Anthony, Tracy Wolfson at Rupp Arena. We've got 3.42 to play, and Kentucky has taken control of things here in the last few minutes. Clamped down on the Cardinals on this end of the floor, not allowing them to make any shots from the field, but one in the last seven and a half minutes. And, and then without Randall, Andrew and Aaron Harrison combined for 19 points in the second half and really impressed. Early in the season when I watched them play, when things didn't go well, you could see their body language. They feel sorry for themselves. And, and as a leader, that rubs off on the other guys. Not the case today. When things didn't go well, they got tougher and started making effort plays. They definitely, I think, won the trust of their teammates with their performance here in this second half. Harrison to Harrison. Six on the shot clock. Aaron, three, off the mark. Out to Van Treese. Still a lot of time if you're Lobo, but they're going to have to get somebody else involved offensively. Kentucky giving them nothing. Blackshear goes baseline and was fouled on the way up. And, and there, there's an example. You know, you, you watch this game and you, you, you're concerned with Jones and Smith. You're saying, well, they're, they're trying to do too much. Part of it is because no one else is giving them any support. And you can look in a guy's eyes and tell when they don't want that possession right there. Patino did a great job of forcing Blackshear to have to go make a play. Blackshear has made 31 of 35 attempts this season. And by the way, an outrageous morning sports team is about to be unleashed on the nation January 6th on CBS Sports, weekday mornings at 6 Eastern time. Boomer and Carton coming up on the CBS Sports Network. Blackshear gets them both. Let's see if that gets his intensity level up a little bit here for this stretch. Timeout called by Kentucky. Seven point game inside of three minutes. Coach Cal diagramming for his Wildcats an inbounds pass here as they called the timeout. Nothing was available after the free throws made by Louisville. And they know that full court pressure. It's going to be swarming here the last 241. And if you're Lobo, you don't have to get too aggressive. There's still enough time for you to get stops on the shot clock, but you don't want to do that right there where you're giving them an opportunity to get three points. Again, double bonus. Andrew Harrison will shoot two. Andrew Harrison at the line for two. And, and, and as I say that, Jim, you, you got to also remember that, again, Kentucky has struggled all year with their ability to, to convert at the free throw line. Those free throws got a lot of hang time. Yeah. Hawkins on the floor now for Young. You know, when Randall left the game for good, Kentucky was down one. Now he's seen very little action in this half. And it's been 18 to 9 Wildcats since. Smith challenging Pauly Stein, and it's off the Kentucky player. And that was a really good example of defensively of the rule of verticality. He didn't go into Russ Smith. Great non call there by the official. Chris Jones. Vantrese. Keeps it. And that's going to be a reach in on Carly Stein. 
And Carly Stein knows, Jim, excuse me, that Russ Smith, when he's going full speed, he's looking to split that pick and roll. And a good job there with the hands to swipe it away. But the officials must have seen contact on the backside. Boy, Smith, it's been hard work at the line for him today. He has missed a lot of free throws here in this game, has not had the same rhythm from the line that we've seen over the course of the season. And it stays 69-61, Kentucky. The same exact score, the Wildcats beat the Cardinals down in New Orleans in the national semifinals two years ago. On their way to winning the title over Kansas on the Monday night. Now inside two minutes. Now this possession, you can still just play tough defense. There'll be enough time if you get a stop here without having a foul. This Poitras had Kentucky back on top by 10. How about the ability to get into the lane. We talked about it at the top. And then the good decision being made by Harrison. Poitras with the finish. Kentucky in control. Tomorrow, the final day of the regular season, doubleheader action on CBS. And it all gets started at noon Eastern with the NFL today. Baltimore at Cincinnati, the mini view early and late afternoon. New England, Buffalo. Or that Denver at Oakland or Kansas City, San Diego game here on the NFL on CBS. Jim, you got that long commute double to get dip. to uh, Cincinnati, double right? About an hour drive. Be up to see the Ravens and the Bengals mm -hmm. tomorrow. Bengals have already won their division. Ravens fighting for their playoff lives. They need a win and they need some help. Blackshear hits the first. Henderson comes in for Jones on the Louisville side, and it's Young for Kentucky back on the floor. Coming into this season, both these teams, I should say coming into this game, had more questions for me than, than answers. Could the Harrison Twins mature? I think we've seen that aspect of it. And from Louisville's standpoint, could their front line have an impact? Not the case in both of their losses. Going to have to be if they want to have an opportunity to repeat. Harrison to his brother. Back outside. Steel forced. Up ahead. Blackshear will put it down with 56 seconds down to seven. And Russ Smith, very fortunate, got away with the travel on that steal. And Blackshear able to get the finish, Mobile still fighting seven point deficit. Coming out of a steal by Russ Smith. He had eight steals here at Rupp last year in their second round tournament win over North Carolina A&T, which tied an all time NCAA tournament record eight in one game. Yeah, and he also got away with the travel on that possession as well. There. Yeah, a little bunny hop on that one. He scored only one point in the last 14 minutes. And, and listen, some of it is on him. I think fatigue has a lot to do with it as well. And, and keep in mind, we, we, we keep belaboring this, but no one else for Louisville has been able to step up and do anything outside of their starting backcourt from an offensive standpoint. Dwight Blackshear almost got away with that one. Almost made the theft. Double up, back over to Harrison, ahead to Young. Lobs oh. it. And still able to maintain possession. Well, they have gotten fortunate, really not good decisions at all. James Young there, there's no reason to go for that lob. The clock is your best friend. Very fortunate here. They don't convert there, but they get to the loose balls here in the corner. And then almost turn it over again here. And Louisville has to force the foul. Check it 
They'll bring Hancock back in for Henderson. Hawkins on the floor for Kentucky for Young. All right. Missed them both. Now can Louisville make things interesting with 38 seconds. Smith driving, dishes, Blackshear three. Long to Hancock. He goes baseline and he'll take the two. Followed up, yes. Tapped up and in by Harrell. With 24 seconds, it's down to five. And foul on Hancock there. I, I mean, the two is, is good, but you really needed a three in a situation like that. Well, you're going to put the man back on the line who just yeah. missed two. had a really good game here with the exception of his inability to knock down the free throws. Whoa. Still a two possession game. This is the big one coming up. And Blackshear sweeps it. To Smith. Driving. Looking for help. Blackshear can't handle it. Yeah, that's Blackshear's fault. That's a, an example there where you got to understand what's going on. If you take a look at this possession here, freeze it there. He's got to slide to create an angle for that pass. He basically straight lined him, meaning he stayed behind the defender, not giving Smith an opportunity to lead him into that three pointer. Fourth turnover charged against Smith. And the inbounds throw goes to Young, and now he'll go to the line for a couple. And, and it's his turnover, but it's not his fault. And that's why a lot of times not having awareness out on the floor for Blackshear on that possession hurts his team. Blackshear has fouled out. Not the factor today, Wayne Blackshear, they need it. Remember, he got in that early foul trouble, and it happens so often where it takes you out of the game. Had to sit for a long period in that first half and just really never got back into the flow. Handicap it for me, Greg. You've seen now the two teams. What about their tournament prospects? Uh, listen, I still think both have a terrific chance to get to Dallas. You remember, too, this, even though Lobo did go on the road at FIU earlier. Not the same as coming into this hostile environment. And you know how difficult it is in college basketball to win on the road. But ultimately, the Cardinals are going to have to figure out somebody else who can score consistently for them. And if you're, you're Kentucky, I think they're showing growth. Their backcourt far more effective today. James Young, I really like what he brought to the table on both ends. Jones. No go. Van Trees back outside. Five seconds. Smith, he thought he was fouled. And it's Kentucky withstanding Louisville's early second half charge. And the Wildcats win it. 73-66. James Young with a double-double. 18 points, 10 rebounds. He also had four assists for Greg Anthony and Tracy Wilson. Jim Nance saying so long from Lexington, Kentucky. 73, Louisville 66. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the 2014 Men's National Championship.